Hey everybody. Um, so uh, yeah, still going with the um, the new modular wall system. Um, <clears throat> I uh, I think I found a a way to paint these things that's pretty quick and painless, and uh, and I really like the uh, the end result. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the table is definitely turning into something that I'm like pretty proud of that, you know, I'm like proud to play on we either for with my night haunts in like Warcry or Frostgrave. Um, I think it kind of gives me a ridiculous home field advantage uh, with uh, with Warcry because my night haunts can fly. <laughs> I, I had this idea. Um, I, uh, I wanted to do like a uh, sort of like a, a ruined like prison system. Uh, with like uh, prison cells everywhere and walls and stuff, and, and my night aunts can just fly around on it. But uh, but anyways, so yeah, um, the uh, the the painting system really quick, really painless. Um, I did I did two two different versions. I experimented with a couple different versions. Um, I uh, this one I just did like acrylic washes on top of bare plaster and uh and then the uh the plaster does have some pigments in it um <clears throat> the uh that was mostly because i wanted to uh make sure that if i like drop things um i had noticed on some of my other stuff that i've made plaster stuff there was like chipping on it and um uh it was noticeable, not quite that noticeable because things are covered in snow. But I basically just wanted to make sure that if things did get chipped, then it would just look like a little crack in the stone. Um, but the uh, the paint job, I did, I did, yeah, I did this one that I just did uh, acrylic washes on top of bare plaster, and then I did this one with spray paint, and then did the um, acrylic. You know a paint job on top of it and then did like snow flocking and static grass and stuff on top of them um i like the spray paint better <laughs> spray paint is just you know like the the plaster soaks up paint it does love to be painted but it kind of endlessly soaks up paint it's like if you're doing the washes it just keeps soaking up more and more acrylic because it's water-based and then the spray paint you know, it's, um, it's a, I don't know, which, what, what do you call it? It's an, you know, it's an oil or a, um, an enamel. So you just, you do one coat on it and then you do your paint job and it's just quicker and easier, you know, but the, because they have some pigments in them, because the, uh, because the plaster has, uh, some gray color to it already. I don't have to douse them with spray paint to get rid of every single little white spot on them. I can just, you know, hit them all over and just kind of give them a dusting and then, you know, go on with the acrylic, but it creates that like barrier layer that kind of seals things down. Um, so anyways, and then I, and then I found a, um, I, I think I found a new technique for doing snow flocking that I really, really like way better. So anyways, yeah, let's do some, uh, some painting. And then I think this is the last video I'm going to do about these guys, unless I come up with some new like system or something, because, uh, uh, done a lot of these, <laughs> I'm going to move on to something else. But anyways, yeah, let's, uh, Let's let's do some painting. All right, I'm getting ready to uh, put together some of these things. Um, I have pretty much everything I need. I think I'm missing like a few cast pieces, but um, uh, I'm gonna make some of um, some of my little gate things, my little arches, and the. Uh, the modular um, column sections that, that connect them. So first off, let's see these guys. I'm just gonna hit the backs of these with a little bit of sandpaper, just to make sure that everything is 
nice and level. Those guys are nice and flat. Um, so yeah, you'll notice that these guys, this plaster has a little bit of uh, pigments in it. Um, so that's mostly just because I'm a klutz and I drop things and if they break, um, then nobody will know. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick these guys on with some E6000 glue. Oh, this stuff. It's just impossible to... This glue is crazy strong. Have a little piece of MDF here. Just a little scrap piece of MDF. Put a puddle of glue on there. So this glue, it actually, um, uh, great. Uh, it needs to activate, so it needs to like sort of oxidize a little bit before um, before it starts to cure. So it's good to kind of like uh, let it get exposed to the air so actually like that <laughs> um, like you don't want to just glob it on and then stick it down it actually helps to kind of rub it around a little bit so it gets some oxygen but this is like a jeweler's glue um, it's just it once it dries I don't even know how to get it apart. Like, I think you need some kind of solvent to um, get it to uh, to come apart. So I just want to make a little gap in there for things to slide in and out of. Just gonna glue this guy up completely, set it aside. So it can kind of cure, just do its thing for a while. So these are just some little MDF uh, cutoffs that I have. What's that MDF lying around? Super useful. You good? Alright, and then let's stick some feet on it. First off. Make sure everything's still lined up. stuff does have a fairly long working time. It takes a while to cure, like a few hours to totally cure. And then I'll put some toppers on it. Should be working from the inside out, but it's not a big deal.
Oh no, I need more of these. pieces I always need more of. I'm constantly casting over and over again. All right, and then for these guys, I need to glue these to foam so I can't use this stuff because it has a solvent in it that will melt foam. So I will use a different type of glue. Alright, so for these, since I want to glue these to um, pieces of insulation foam, I'm just going to use some uh, acrylic, some caulk. This stuff is dirt cheap. Get a big tube like this for it's either like a dollar or two dollars. And it's foam safe. out a blob of this stuff and get it to come out. That's definitely enough. I'm just going to start gluing these parts on. Let's see. I don't have enough of these either. I always run out of these too. Uh, let's see. So these go like this. Oh, these are a little bit tall. I meant to make a little recess in here. I forgot to do that. Uh, quick fix. Yeah, I'll just do it real quick. Yeah, I want a little um, recessed section in here so that these guys can kind of. Uh, uh, snap together like Legos if I decide to do that later. Entirely decide what I want to do for toppers for these guys. So, okay, let's put these on first. square to line things up but <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to get this stuff all over my my uh, painting mat. I like to make these things last as long as I can. Since this is going to be the top I want this part to uh, line up the best. Another, so what I mean is, I want I want this top part to be flat, right here, like that. Okay, now that I've got all of these guys on where I want them. Uh, I'm going to start putting the columns on the side one. And again, like this is the part that I want to be flat on this side. This side I can just uh, sand down because I have everything lined up. Right, so now I'm just going to go around and kind of clean up 
let me squeeze out. Um, that's actually the look that I'm going for later though. I want these to have like some sort of grout showing in between them, but not caulk. I need it to be caulk. So, while that's curing up, um, I, uh, <laughs> I have one of these guys, or let's see, yeah, um, I, uh, this is one that's like most of the way done, or it's, or it's done, uh, so I'm gonna take this guy outside and spray paint him. Uh, this is like what I kind of want, that that's the, the look that I'm going for. I'm kind of playing with this um, this design for my arches. Um, I really like this one. I think I'm gonna keep this design, but these I'm still kind of messing around with. So, um, you know, what else? I have some granny grating. Uh, I'm going to cut some more sections of these out and then I'm, I'm going to take those outside and spray paint them too. I'm going to spray paint everything outside. I'm going to put these somewhere. Alright, I've got some granny grating and I don't even know what this stuff is. Like I know, I just know what is granny grating. Um, it's for needlepoint, but you know, once again, dirt cheap. You get like, I don't know, like five sheets like this, big sheets for like $3 or something. Granny grading is the slang that we use in the hobby community. Because <laughs> we use this stuff to make like, like this. Um, or coluses, cages, prisons, things like that. So I'm definitely going to take these out and spray paint them because nothing sticks to these like paint wise. You need to spray paint them just so that stuff will stick to it. It's my new favorite scalpel. It's a scalpel scalpel. It's a real scalpel. If you couldn't tell. I got my edges on these guys. That's how easy that is. Thing I forgot, I, was, I wanted to show this. Um, so I have some towel grout. Um, <laughs> I, I got some towel grout to play around with, and um, I, uh, I found that it works really good for certain things, um, like putting um, to make uh, grout, you know, to like fill in these little gaps. Like I forgot to do that on this guy. I did it on this guy with some wall, some spackle, like filler, you know, just plaster. And I like the, the tile grout look a lot better. Um, let me find one of the pieces that I did with that. Yeah, I did, I did this guy with the um, tile grout and it just has a much better 
texture, you know, for for wall. Um, I think it looks better, much better as like a finished piece. So, anyways, what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna mix it up really thick and chunky. So you just you don't need that much water. I'm actually using a little, you know, pipette to put water in there because I want to control it a lot. I'll show you how, how like thick and chunky I want it. Okay, we'll need a little bit. So yeah, I'm just going to use this as a filler and you know, surprise surprise, it, it looks good as a, like a wall, um, a grout, you know, in between the, the tiles and stuff, sorry, in between the cast pieces. Or a mortar. It looks, it looks like a good uh, mortar. That's the word I'm looking for. And, you know, I do want to seal it with some spray paint later. Um, just to kind of seal it down. It takes paint just fine. You know, everything like plaster soaks up paint. It loves to be painted. Um, but just to get a kind of consistent look, I want to spray paint everything. This kind of charcoal gray slate, uh, you know, chalky, chalky slate finish. So I, uh, I went ahead and cast up the uh, missing pieces on this guy, so this guy's ready to go. And then, yeah, where's this one? Yeah, I cast up this piece, put it on this guy. So, um, and then you can see what the, uh, the tile grout looks like when it dries. You know, it very much has like a mortar kind of finish. Um, and then this will take paint. It will take acrylic really good. Um, the thing about the plaster is that it will just kind of endlessly soak up paint. Um, <clears throat> so eventually, you know, you will get like a, a finished piece where you, you know, you have like a, a layer of ac acrylic kind of protecting it, but it's going to take a lot more paint. <laughs> so. What I, what I ended up doing was I, I spray painted these guys. Um, these ones, I just actually, I, I did, you know, more and more layers of acrylic on them. And then I used some of this, um, this is just Mod Podge, Mod Podge and black paint. I uh, can't really see it in there. That's what that looks like. <laughs> um, but I sealed the, um, the foam part with, uh, with Mod Podge. Uh, just to kind of cover that up. You can kind of see it in there a little bit in the cracks. But um, so I think it's easier to just hit these guys with spray paint. Uh, it kind of seals all the tile grout stuff down and uh, you get this nice chalky finish. So I've been using this stuff. Well, okay, so I started out, I was using Krylon and the Krylon, uh, this is the chalky finish anvil gray Krylon. And then I also tried this stuff, the Rust-Oleum charcoal chalky finish. I like this stuff better. So I used to buy Krylon, I would go to Hobby Lobby and stock up on it when they would have it on sale. This stuff is actually cheaper when it's full price at Walmart, it's like $3 a can and this stuff it doesn't stink as much it um 
I like it. I just like it better. It's just, it, it, it dries faster. It's just hands down, this, is, this stuff is better. So I'm gonna take everything outside and I'm gonna spray paint it. And then if I get some orange peeling on the foam, that's fine. Like, I don't really care. Um, it, it'll look like a, like a ruined stone. So, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna take everything outside. I'm gonna spray paint it and get everything like this. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so while everybody else is outside trying to get to this kind of uh, finish, <laughs> um, I uh, so this is my original test piece, and then I just did a uh, a light, you know, a dry brush with some of this color. Um, <clears throat> I actually really like this color. Uh, this is just you know craft paint that's like fifty cents, eighty five cents a tube. Uh, like Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, this this thing, I did something a little bit different though. So I um, I used this. Uh, this is this is just a you know this is just a dry brush. And then this is a um, this is a sponge stipple. Uh, same thing with these. So you can kind of see. Like there's no texture on this foam up here at all, but it sort of looks like there is because of the sponge, like the stippling. Um, so, you know, these are my highlights up here. And then like, I can still dry brush these. I can come back and dry brush them later, but I did, I really do like the, uh, the sponge stippling look better. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, so yeah, I've got a few, I'm gonna grab a couple colors. Uh, and yeah, this is another example of the same same thing, the uh, sponge stippling. So you can see how that looks on the stone, but um, yeah, I'm gonna grab a couple colors. I think I wanna make it uh, do these stones, kind of like some different colors, not just this uh, gray. So I'm gonna grab a couple more colors. All right, so I've got some of the, I like this color too, this iced coffee color, uh, some burnt umber, and then this is uh, prairie sage. So yeah, I'm just gonna mix up some little earth tones. Um, oh, too much. And then when I'm uh, when I'm doing like the sponge like dry brush thing, I'm gonna be going uh, full strength with this stuff. But then I can, it, you know, it's craft paint, so it makes a good wash. Like it has lousy coverage, <laughs> so which is kind of what you want with a wash. <clears throat> All right. Got my gloves. I do read the comments. I know that it drives you guys crazy when you watch me paint my hands. Um, okay, so this is the one that's, you know, gotten the spray paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this sponge and then uh, I'm just gonna kind of mix some colors. It's not really, uh, um, it needs some MDF. Just gonna kind of take some of that paint off. You can mix it up a little bit on there on the palette. And then the sponge just kind of it does like a sort of dry brush kind of thing. I'm just picking up the, the highlights, you know. But, uh, but you get this cool, like, texture.
So like same idea, like I do want to have highlights up here. But I want my shadows to be, you know, down here. So I'm kind of focusing the, uh, the lighter tones to the top. And this sponge is like slightly damp, so it kind of softens it. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this guy kind of dry for a little bit. Um, but I, I did take some um, spackle and then just did some little filler in between these guys on this one. And then I sprinkled the uh, uh, plaster on top of it, so I'll show you how I do that in a sec. Seal it down. Um, so I think I'm just gonna do a little bit of a wash. Uh, I don't want this plaster, this stuff to look quite so clean. I think I'm just gonna do a little craft paint to kind of wash. Just kind of dirty some of this stuff up a little bit. Now that this guy is dried a little bit, kind of drying, <laughs> um, but you can see how that little wash just kind of makes the grout look a little dirtier, a little dingier, it makes the snow stand out, the clean snow stand out a little better. Um, so now I'm just gonna do a little bit of dry brushing, so some more of this color. I really do like this color, I've been going through it. kind of like a medium-sized uh, makeup brush. And I'll do circles on top where the sun would be coming down. And then once I come to the sides, then I'm gonna put more highlights up here on the top. And then kind of work down. So this is brighter up here. Has more, more cast shadows. This guy in some places, not everywhere, just you know a little bit. So I'm using this, uh, using this stuff. Um, it's uh, just spackle, spackle filler. So that's what it looks like, you know, in the container. Um, I'm gonna water it down a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit out. A little bit of water. And if my water is dirty, you know, it's totally fine. Cause it's, it's gonna dirty up this grout anyways. In fact, I might even just add a little bit of this. There we go. That's looking good. I don't want my spackle to look super clean. 
and then I'll just rub it off. And that looks, it looks like a, a dirty um, spackle or a mortar in between in some places. And you know, I don't want it everywhere. I want it just in like certain places to, uh, to look like mortar. Okay, and now I want to put down some, uh, some static grass on top of these guys. Um, these, um, these big ones, you know, they're just way too big to go on a mini base. So, um, they look good on terrain though. I tried making some of my own. They just, they came out okay. You know, this is, um, this is some of this, uh, dead grass stuff that I have. Oh, um, this stuff. So I just sprinkled this on top of some glue on some parchment paper. They came out looking okay. Um, you know, dead grass doesn't really stand up that much anyway, so... Um, I'm gonna use both of these though. So let's see, I want some of this uh, gel super glue. It's just a lot thicker. Uh, let's put that on there. And I like to do this um, before I do the uh, the snow. Come on. Oh, way too much. Way too much. It's okay, I'll cover it up with snow. And then of course there's just the old fashioned way. Just take a little bit of glue. Put some of this in these uh, in the cracks. It's all gonna get covered up with snow anyways later. All right, and now to do the snow, um, I, uh, you know, I bought this stuff. I bought this, these Woolen Scenics um, snow flakes, and it does look like fresh snow, but you know what I actually like better? It's just using plaster. It's a much finer grit. Um, and then this stuff is archival. I mean, it's non-reactive. It's not going to like change color over time, like plaster and this stuff. This stuff is like plastic and then plaster is just, it's, um, you know, it's gypsum. So it's not gonna change color. It's not gonna turn yellow like, um, uh, like baking soda. Baking soda will turn yellow over time because it absorbs stuff from the air and it changes color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the lid down from my handy dandy um, little, these, these, the, uh, there's a Japanese restaurant by me that they put everything in these takeout containers. 
we won't feed you on plates. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna take these, and then I'm gonna take my little colander thing. Take this guy, and then because we're indoors in my studio, I'm gonna spray them with this stuff. So the um, the varnish, you know, it's gonna protect things, it's gonna protect the paint job, but also it's going to, um, this doesn't stink as much. The, the acrylic stuff doesn't stink as much. So I'm gonna put some on top. I'm gonna, you know, kind of spray it all over. Um, like this, you know, all over. Okay. And then put it like that. I'm gonna sprinkle some plaster on top. That's what that looks like. Sort of like powdered sugar. So I like that look. I think it looks cool. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, throw away this stuff. You know, I still, I still, like if I was gonna make a fresh snowpack, I would use this and then mix it with some glue and a little bit of white paint. But um, for, for this, I kind of like the, uh, the powdered sugar, fresh snow look. And then after I've done that, like the, the powder on top of it, then I'll hit it again from above. And then that's just gonna seal down all of that plaster. So, so that's not going anywhere. That's totally sealed. And it looks, you know, it has a really nice looking fresh snow look to it. I'll do, I'll do another one of these. Oop, I forgot to, forgot to hit it with varnish first. All right, so that's the kind of finished uh, look. Um, I will show you, I'll do some pictures. I'll show you guys what these look like sort of set up on the, um, the Frostgrave uh, Warcry table. Um, I really like the look. I'm, you know, I'm like starting to get really proud of these things. I think they look really cool. Um, so anyways, yeah, I'm still playing with this design. I'm not sure whether they really need these little wing pieces on them to, uh, you know, cause they, they stand up just fine on their own. They do, this, this does stabilize, stabilize them, um, to, you know, put them together like that, but, uh, they don't really need it. And then I'm not sure how I feel about seeing the little mechanism that's holding it together. So, um, but you know, it does, uh, it does serve a purpose. So, but these guys, these are the most, uh, top heavy ones and with the tiniest feet and then they stand up just fine as long as they're like sort of clipped in there. And then if they're, if they don't have this piece on the side, then it looks fine like freestanding too. So anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care you guys and I will see you in the next one.